to Half Acre Homestead. This is Sangria. I uh, wanted to take a quick video. I uh, encountered something today that I haven't seen in probably 10 years. And I just wanted to, I wanted to let you know what it is, show it to you, let you know what it is, and show you what we do to treat it. Pull this fur back. You can see her side right here? This looks like somebody's been chewing her fur. And in a way it has. Okay. Lay down on your side for me, sweetie. Now, here, lay down, baby. Come on, help me out here. Help me out here. Come on. No, baby, we gotta show folks what's wrong with you. I know, I know. I know, baby, but we're, we're trying to help folks, okay? Here. Anyway, this, folks, it looks like it started right back here, and some of that hair is growing back in. See that patch? Basically, bare skin. Okay. Obviously sore. I need to watch and see if I need to watch and see if this focuses. See there, right there, that little plug of hair. See right on the end, that mass of skin right there at the end. They also call it walking dandruff or dandruff mites. It's fur mites, folks. Okay, now if a rabbit's fur comes out, it comes out like that. Okay, see I just pulled that? That's molting. That's molting fur. See, it's loose dead fur that came out, and you pull it loose. If it comes out, and it's got a little tuft of that skin, where the, where the hairs come together at the follicle, um, you've got a different problem. Okay, and come here, sweetie. Come on. Come on. Yeah, here. Right, 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 right. There you go, sweetie. Shh, shh, shh. Calm down. Shh, shh. You see? Okay, now look. This is... This can be hard to look at, folks. It's hard for me to look at. This is... I had this young lady at a show, you know, nine days ago. Like I say, I haven't seen fur mites on any of my rabbits in ten years. See, it started back here. See, some of that hair is coming back in. Okay, but see the... See the flakes right there? Like dandruff? See, I just. See? Just like just like a, a person that has dandruff. Okay, that's fur mites. Lay back, sweetie. Lay back. Daddy got gotcha. you. Here. Here. Lay still. Lay still, baby. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. Anyway, see, there's her skin. She's all wrinkled up. It comes all down into here. Underneath. See, it comes all up in here towards her front leg. See, it's almost like they're making, a, it's almost like an army and they're marching. Okay, right in here, see that? That's fur mites. If you see that, they also call it mange mites. Here, sit up. Now you can sit up, sweetie. See here? Well, it's gone now. Folks, if you see that in a rabbit, in your rabbitry, the treatment, the only treatment that I trust, and a lot of people will, is going gonna, is gonna to scream and yell, I don't care. The only thing that I've ever used, and it's been a while since I had to use it, like I said, but the only thing that I had, I've ever had, I've had some bad infestations of this in the past. The only thing I ever had to completely wipe it out was ivermectin. Sangria recently bred. It's not the best to give ivermectin to a rabbit that's pregnant. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna let this continue. Sangria is only five or six days along if she bred. I'm not gonna let this continue for almost a month. So my only option, or the option I'm gonna take, is I'm gonna give her the dose of ivermectin that she needs and hope for the best. Worst case scenario, she can lose her babies. Well, no, I can't say that. Absolute worst case scenario is it, it can eventually, if left gone long enough, she could come, become so infested with it that she actually starts becoming anemic. It's just like, you know, if you've ever seen a dog that was overridden with fleas and they become anemic because the fleas are sucking so much out of the, the dog, these mites will do the same thing if they're let go long enough. 
and we're just not going to do that. If we lose, if we lose this litter of babies, well, the only thing I can say is I'm not happy about it. But if Sangria dies, the baby's going to die too. Whereas if we just go ahead and give her a dose, it could be that it'll take care of the mites and the babies will be just fine. I have given ivermectin to pregnant does before. Like this, it was a half two case. And I think I've had more successful outcomes than I have negative outcomes. So I feel somewhat hopeful that this will all be okay. But bottom line, we gotta get this taken care of. Uh, this stuff it can, it is just as bad as ear mites. It can move through a whole, an entire herd in just a little while. I don't know whether or not she picked this up. See, there's some, here's some starting up here at the nape of her neck. See that? That's just starting right in there. See the dark portion? Yeah, right in there. See that? So, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm not telling you to do it. If you do it, something happens to your rabbit, to your rabbit's litter, or anything else, it's on you. Okay, I'm talking to adults here. You're an adult. You choose whether you want to do this with your rabbit or not, not me. I'm just telling you, this is my rabbit, this is what I'm going to do. And, and, and it, that's just, I mean, that's the way it has to be. Sometimes you have to make tough decisions. Ultimately, I can only say that while I don't want it to happen, if she was to lose the litter that's possibly growing inside her, ultimately, to me, that wouldn't be nearly as bad as losing her. I don't know. I, I don't like having to make these decisions, but if, you, if you're a serious rabbit breeder, you know, if you do more than keep a couple of does in the backyard just to produce meat for your own family, you're going to encounter things like that. And in, and in fact, even if you're just raising meat rabbits, you can still encounter things like this. Uh, what fur is here is, is, is beautiful, but we gotta we got to nip this in the bud. So what I do, just to show you, this is what I use. Uh, brand is not important, but what it is, it's an ivermectin paste of 1.87%, and it is originally intended for horses. Ivermectin, folks, it don't matter what it's designed for. Ivermectin is ivermectin, and you want a super small amount, okay? Just like that. I should have done I should have done this part first. And actually I've got that in the wrong hand. Let me flip. Come here. Yeah, I know. I know you're gonna be difficult. Flip over there. There we go. There we go. Let's see if I can get this in here without getting my finger bit. What I do is I come right along the side here. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Folks. This is a little tricky and I'm gonna to have to have an extra set of hands. So my cameraman or my camera lady is gonna to have to put the camera down. We're gonna shut it off. We're gonna get this done and then we're gonna come back to you. It's all over but the crime. You saw the very small amount, okay? This ivermectin is concentrated. This whole tube right here is intended to treat a 1,250 pound horse. Anyway, it's quite a handy, heavy animal, okay? And I'm holding, I'm holding a nine pound rabbit very very small you saw what I had hopefully you saw what I had on my finger it's already done I'm not doing it again but it's just maybe about size of the about half to two-thirds the size of a green pea now what we did was Dana can you kind of bring your hands in here and kind of show everybody what you did with her lip? here I'll, I'll let me let me lay her back come here just leave it running I am pushing it down just a little okay okay so Dana while I was holding her with this hand and I had medicine on this finger. Uh oh. Now she's being on right. Well, she didn't like the taste of it probably. Just, uh, no, just pull her just pull her lip up, just like you did a while ago. <laughs> Sangria. I think we gonna do it again. There. Anyway, she pulled her lip up, exposed the ends, the underside of the, of her lip. I just went like that, wiped it up inside there, let go Sangria and her little tongue to hear the rest. That's probably why she didn't want Dana to do it again because she don't like it. This is, this is, I don't think that, I don't think what I got, I don't think I paid attention and got the flavored kind. I used to get the kind that was apple flavored. And I think what I got, I got the wrong stuff and I don't, I think this just tasted like medicine. And she's not happy with that at all, are you baby? Mm -hmm. She thought we was gonna put some more in there. Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I do, folks. I'm not telling you to do it. If you do that with your rabbit, if this rabbit dies, because you can overdose a rabbit on ivermectin, and it will die. That's something that you face. You have to be very careful. A very small, minute amount. Actually, it's better. It's better if you keep, if you if you keep the injectable around. But un unfortunately, I use so very little 
ivermectin that it I've used about if I buy the, the little the smallest injectable bottle that I can get and I think it's about 30 bucks I'll, I will have used about that much out of that bottle by the time it goes out of date that's why I buy that I can't see throwing a $30 bottle away and use that much out of it I can get that for about four bucks when it goes out of date I've lost a lot less if I have to chunk it and get another one and sometimes I can catch this at Orsland Farming Home Sometimes I can catch these on sale for like $2.99. And, uh, you know, uh, and these keep longer. These keep a lot longer. Somehow this is made, I don't know, I don't know how exactly. But see this right here, I've already had this a little while, and this is good until February of 2018. I don't think, I don't think what you get in the injectable, I don't think it keeps that long, even in the refrigerator. Actually, I don't remember. It's been so long. I don't even remember if ivermectin has to be kept refrigerated. It probably does since it's injectable. Uh, anyway, that's what we do. Be careful, folks. You're better off giving less when it comes to this ivermectin stuff, especially if you're using the paste. Less is more. What about quarantine or stay away from the other rabbits? Well, by the time that you've caught this, here's the deal. Did she bring this home from the show? We don't know. Did she take it to the show with her? We don't know. Okay. So what we don't know, what rabbits has she been in contact with then, with since then? She was in a carrier right next to Romeo. No. She actually had bred with Romeo after we, after a couple days after the show. And she is next to Salt. And she housed it next door to Salt. But here's the thing: they're being these guys are being kept in a wood building. Wood hutches is one of the one of the, is one of the things that the mites live in that make it hard to get rid of. How far could they have propagated through the building to the other side? I don't know. Ideally, you can either A, keep a very close watch on the rest of your herd, treat those that you know have came in direct physical contact. If the rabbit's been bred, if the rabbit is next door to a cage, is, is next door in a multiple hole cage that's only got a wire partition. You know how our cages are made? We've got three, three holes and only a wire partition. Those rabbits can come in contact with each other. That means that rabbit that's next door needs to be treated and possibly the one next door because if the one in the center has been treated or has been infected, they could have turned around and handed it to the, their neighbor on the other side. It moves quick. Unfortunately, this is not as easily treated as ear mites. Ear mites, you know, uh, once a week for three weeks drop about a half a cap full of mineral oil in each ear and you're done. This unfortunately takes a chemical that I'm not happy having to use. But I am happy that this is something that normally if you take proper quarantine measures, get everybody that the rabbit has come in contact with in a reasonable period of time. One treatment's enough because what this is, is you're giving this ivermectin to this rabbit and it's actually getting in her bloodstream and the, and the mites that are gonna continue, that are still on her, that are gonna continue to try to feed on her. Within just a short period of time, that ivermectin is gonna be flowing through her bloodstream and when they suck her blood, they're gonna get the ivermectin and it's gonna kill them. It's, uh, it's just like the little pill in a way that you can give dogs and cats for fleas, except this is for fur mites. The same stuff, it'll work on ear mites too. Just so you know, but wouldn't you rather just put a drop of oil in the rabbit's ear than give it a chemical that could kill it? I would. That's why I never. That's why, I, why when I did the ear mite video, I didn't suggest putting uh, giving ivermectin to the rabbits for ear mites. The mineral oil is so much better and safer. But in this case, ivermectin, one dose, one dose. Now, on the other hand, you know, I say you can over. I say you can overdose a rabbit with it. I never have. If anything, I probably, I still give more than what the rabbits need because it's it's not accurate dosing, folks. Like I said, we don't have rabbit savvy veterinarians around here. Uh, I told you that in, in when I did the mastitis video with uh, Marble. We're pretty much on our own. You know, if we can't fix them ourselves, we either have to, you know, if we can't fix them ourselves, they either die from their affliction or we have to call them. So this is this is why we do what we do. I wish there were more rabbit savvy veterinarians in this area. But then again, for most people's cases that just keep a few meat rabbits in the backyard, they wouldn't pay what a veterinarian is gonna charge to treat a rabbit. They would just get rid of the rabbit and get another rabbit. Fortunately, that's a little easier said than done for us. 
That's how we treat for. That's how we treat for fermite. If you treat that way for fermites, good luck. And if you have successfully treated fermites with ivermectin, and your rabbit was well, just like Sangria is going to be well, leave us a comment. We'd like to hear about it. We'd love to hear your success stories because there are some horror stories all over the internet of how people have overdosed and killed their rabbits with ivermectin. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying I never have. But then again, ivermectin is not something I've been using. I've been around rabbits about oh, about 30 years, but ivermectin, uh, maybe a third of that. She's going to be all right. We'll keep you updated. Anyway, we uh, I saw that. We had to get her treated. But I wanted to be able to share with you and show you what it looks like, show you what we do about it. I hope this helps somebody. Drop us a comment. Hit the like button if you like this video. Share it on social media if you know others, other rabbit people that you think this might help. Hey, we, we're going to make some more videos. If y'all want, want to get a notification when they're posted, hit that subscribe button. You'll get an email notification as soon as we have a new video to be posted. Thank y'all for watching. God bless.